Auburn and Alabama, both seven and three, and both headed for postseason bowl games. They call it in Alabama the Iron Bowl, and this is the 1982 edition. The series reflected there, and uh, if it is in fact the Iron Bowl, you can expect a whole lot of scrap iron to be left when the scuffling is done today, because they really get after each other in this old long-running series. A look down on the city of Birmingham, Alabama on a day with a temperature in the low 60s. It is a gray overcast kind of a day. Legion Field, however, is one of the most colorful places in the country always when Auburn and Alabama get together. And the Crimson Tide will kick off. Terry Sanders, the sophomore from Birmingham, will hit the ball. Lionel James, the junior for Auburn, waits for it deep in the end zone. There will be no return. Looking now at the offensive backfield, Randy Campbell. They told him a year ago he couldn't play quarterback, but look what he's done. And Bo Jackson, the big freshman from Bessemer, powerhouse of a man. Lionel James, the speedster, little guy, can fly. Ron O'Neill, big fullback, 5'9", 245. Wide out is Mike Edwards, 6'4", 194, big man with good speed. And now we come to the first play of the ball game. Auburn wearing the white. And Campbell sets him up out of the wishbone formation. And they will run the triple option most of the time. But you can expect today probably to see him working some out of the line. The ball goes to Bo Jackson, the freshman from the 20. He's got two out to about the 22. Making the tackle, Eddie Lowe for Alabama, the weak side linebacker. Eddie Lowe is not very big for a linebacker, but what Bear believes in is speed and quickness. Eddie's only 5'11", 190 pounds but he knows where the football is. He, is. he reads very quickly. Then he can react and come up with a good tackle to stop Jackson number 34. And it's second down and eight for Auburn from their own 22. Same formation, double wide. And the pitch goes back to Lionel James. He's got a big hole around the corner. He gets it up to the 27, wrestles to the 28. And there he is stopped by Al Blue, the free safety. The Auburn offensive front shapes up with Ed West, the tight end, 6'1", 245, primarily a blocker. Steve Wallace at tackle, 265, a freshman. David Jordan at guard, 266, a junior. Bishop Reeves, a center, 255, a senior. Randy Stokes, 256, freshman at guard. And Pat Arrington, 263, junior at tackle. War Eagle, they call him. And it's third down and two from the 28-yard line as Campbell goes down the line on the option, goes outside with it. Look what I found. Pitch to Bo Jackson, tries to get around the corner, slides across the 30. And that football almost got loose to Stan Gay. The right side quarterback brings him down. The advance is just short of the 30. It'll bring up fourth down. Defensively, Alabama's unit, Russ Wood, Randy Edwards, Mike Rodriguez, Jackie Klein, Mike Pitts, backers of Booker and Lowe, the secondary, Castile, Gay, Colburn, Blue. Auburn won't fool around with it with fourth and a half a yard. They'll punt it out of there. Lewis Colbert, a sophomore from Phoenix City, will punt it. This young man is quite a story. He has a club foot. Doesn't bother him. A fine athlete. Gets his kick out of there. Sort of a tail dragger that takes a high bounce and kicks out of bounds. He didn't get a whole lot of yardage out of it. And Colbert was rattled after he came back down to the ground, but no penalty flag. He only got 30 yards. Walter Lewis will start at quarterback. A junior for Alabama. Paul Carruth will be at the halfback spot, 210 pounds. Jeff Fagan, the fullback, 200 pounds. And Ricky Moore uh, in the fullback position at uh, 235. Joey Jones is one wide out, 5'9", 165. And the tight end, or actually a second wide out, will be Jesse Bendross, number 88. They're going to try some new formations today, breaking the bone against Auburn. And Walter Lewis back to throw on first down. He's going big for Joey Jones. He missed him. And it is incomplete. There was contact once the ball was gone, but no contact in the vicinity of the ball and we'll isolate on Joey Jones and see what kind of a threat he can be. Well, Joey Jones is excellent at running his pass routes and he has outstanding speed. He gets behind Drinker number 80. The key is watch Drinker turn his head. If he doesn't play the ball, he turns just in time to play the ball and knock it away. Otherwise, it might have been pass interference. Yeah, that back judge was reaching for the flag and then he turned his head and that saved him. It is second down and 10 for Alabama from their own 40. Out of the wishbone now. 
And Jones just wide to the left side, and Walter Lewis is out there naked by himself and takes a lick as he gets it up to the 44. Scott Wiley, defensive end, knocks him down. A senior from Birmingham. Alabama's offensive front, Jesse Bendross, lining up at the tight end. He is a speedster. Doug Vickers, 248-pound junior at tackle. Gary Bramlett, 252 senior at guard. Steve Mott, the center, 250 a senior. Mike Adcock, 245-pound junior at guard. And Bob Kayavec, 252 a senior at tackle. The ball is on the Alabama 44. It is third down and six. Ben Ross to the top of the picture, Joey Jones to the wide side of the field, and Lewis is back to throw it, getting some heat, sets up the screen. The pass is knocked off to the fullback Moore. Moore gets an Alabama first down as he crosses midfield and goes to about the Auburn 44. What a great call. Third and long, wishbone teams aren't known for their possession-type passing, and one of the best plays for the wishbone would be the screen. Easy throw, you treat it up. Sort of like a running play. You just lay it out to your fullback, get a couple linemen out in front of you, and it's the first down. Excellent execution by the Alabama offense. Tide working now at the Plainsman's 44. Ben Dross now comes to the open side of the field, the bottom of the picture with Joey Jones to the top. They break the bone again. And Lewis is straight back. Alabama opening up with the pass. Again, same play the other way. Ball goes to Ricky Moore. Moore throws some moves, gets four as he pounces to about the 40-yard line. Defensively for Auburn. This is the way they line up with Wiley, Smith, Orkman, Thomas, and Jackson along the front. Carr Martin. They are the linebackers. The secondary, King, Drinkard, Collier, and Harris. Dorman is still hurt, not in there. First quarter of play in Legion Field, Birmingham, Alabama. Second down, six Alabama. Ball on the Auburn 40. No score, first quarter. Lewis going down the line, pitches the ball to Carruth. Carruth trying to turn the corner. Good defensive play by 43, Chris Martin. A 42 it was uh, coming across to make the hit for Auburn. Alabama with two split receivers, Bendross and Jones, opens up the secondary and gives some room for running, and that's their strategy, trying to break out the Auburn defense from being bunched inside, where they're very strong. There is some wind on the field. It is a bowl, and the wind tends to swirl around. It'll be troublesome. Third down, they need three. Lewis going to put it in the air. He goes to the sidelines for Jones, and Jones is out of bounds. Pass is incomplete. Jones, the wide receiver, into the boundary. Make the defensive back think deep. That was the move that he just put on. Turn, get eye, establish eye contact with the ball, and it's a, the pass is a little bit late. He's got one foot in bounds, but he didn't have control of it. He's still juggling the ball right there when he fell out. It is fourth down. It's close. Three for Alabama at the Auburn 37. Ben Ross and Jones come out. All right, we'll punt it. Now we have no, the quarterback. We, they're shifting up. They're going to go. Something tricky. Is Fourth there. and three as Lewis came back in, uh, in a short punt formation. And all that fiddling around has done is uh, use up time on the clock. And it's going to cost Alabama five yards. And now Simmons will come in to do the punting. Malcolm Simmons, who is averaging in 1982 just over 43 yards per punt. And in his career, just under 44. Play offense. 25 second count. If you examine the record, Bear is known for his shifting in and out of punt formation on short yardage to try to draw the defense offside. There are your officials for today the referee, Bob Allier, Harold Johnson, uh, Norbert Ackerman, Bob Caldwell, Joe Delaney, Billy Tees. And Simmons will try to hang it up there. He's not going to be able to. That's going to hit on the goal line and bounce onto the end zone. It was Lewis. Lewis did the punting. So Lewis stayed in there. There's a penalty flag on the field. We'll check it when we come back. Have you ever worried about you or a loved one being in need of immediate emergency assistance? Introducing ZOM, the one-button emergency response system with no monthly fees. ZOM is a revolutionary safety device that can dial emergency assistance with the simple press of one button. 
911 operator, what's your emergency? I think I'm having a heart attack. In only seconds, you or your loved one can request police, fire, or medical assistance on the powerful built-in speakerphone. ZOM works anywhere with any Bluetooth-enabled cell phone. I keep my ZOM with me all the time. I know it makes my children feel better knowing that emergency assistance is just a button away. Similar emergency response services require you to be tethered to your house or car and can cost up to $600 per year in recurring fees. Try the award-winning ZOM, a one-button emergency response system that goes wherever you go, risk-free for 30 days with no monthly fees. Order now at GetZOM.com. That's G-E-T-Z-O-M-M dot com. This is a public announcement. CNN Money reports that in some areas of the country, buyers are scooping up homes for as little as $1,000. Foreclosures are at an all-time high. Government and private banks are liquidating these homes now. If you currently rent a house or apartment, you may call now and learn how to receive your free list of these homes. All others may call tomorrow. Every house must be sold. This is a public announcement. Call 1-800-796-7086. That's 1-800-796-7086. Call now. The Goodyear Blimp America out of Houston. Took three days to get it over here from Houston. Pilot is Larry Chambers out of Spring, Texas. No flag. They picked it up. Malcolm Simmons went in. The punter, he lined up in a slot back position. And Walter Lewis, the quarterback, did the punting. Look out for that one later today. I'm surprised he showed it this soon. Auburn to the attack from the 20. Randy Campbell, the quarterback, keeps on the option. Turns it upfield for two yards where Eddie Lowe brings him down. Many times coaches would tell you size is important but really instincts at linebacker is really what makes them great they somehow know where the ball is Eddie Lowe number 57 did not take the fake of the dive back he moved right to the outside something told him it was going to be the option play that makes the tackle younger brother of an all-american here at Alabama Woodrow Lowe Woody going on to a fine career in professional football second down and eight for Auburn they take it inside here's Campbell's first pass of the day got a man it's good the pass is caught up at the 39-yard line by Chris Woods, a junior from Birmingham. When you, the defense and, and start trying to stop the wishbone <laughs> leaves their wide receiver pretty much open for the intermediate patterns. And you can see Woods, number one, breaks to the outside. He cradles the ball inside for the first down. Holds on to it. Campbell is a 52% passer. Which is pretty good for the wishbone these yep. days. Woods is the leading receiver. That's his 20th catch of the season. First down for the Tigers at their own 39. As they pick up 17 yards on that play. Take it inside on the fake. Campbell keeps it. Out of red shirts after it. And he moves out near the 44 for the better part of five yards. Russ Wood brings him down. Randy Campbell, the quarterback for Auburn, is a story himself as we look at the two coaches. Randy was not able to make the team last year and played split in. A new offensive coach joined Pat Dye's staff, and he worked his way up to the starting quarterback simply because he doesn't make mistakes. Auburn leads the nation in the fewest number of turnovers, 13 for the season, and, and only two interceptions out of 145 attempts. Not too bad. Second down, about six. Go inside with it. And it's out to the 48. Bo Jackson is a freshman, 6'1, 224 pounds from Bessemer. And they really think he's going to be a dandy. Pat Dye says he's the second best talent in the Southeastern Conference, meaning to Herschel Walker. Jackson has tremendous speed. He's running from the right halfback position, meaning he's running to the left, Keith. And it's more difficult to make the cuts for a, right, a natural right hander going to the left. There you see the yardage gained by the two leading ball carriers for Auburn. And Lionel James, little guy, but boy, he's dynamite, and he runs very well in traffic. Alabama sets up a six-man front. They get the ball to James, and uh, they run into a bus. And he stops right about the line of scrimmage as Mike Pitts, big 255-pound senior from Baltimore, makes the stop. It'll be fourth down. And they need a yard. It appears that Auburn will take the chance here. The ball's still on their own 47-yard line. They appear to be go, go, go for it. Wishbone attack should be able to make it, but the, Auburn has not run a play up the middle so far in this ball game. That has been successful. That has been successful. That's correct. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I think this is the game. Greg Pratt, sophomore, 220-pounder out of Albany, Georgia, comes in and sticks his head in the pile, and it's close, Frank. It, it pins entirely on the 
on the spot of the official, and I don't believe that he made it. I cannot see the spot from here. They will measure. So Bob Allier wants the chain on to make sure it's that close. But that's a considerable risk from your own 48 needing a good yard trying to stick your head in against an Alabama defense that has had been raked over the coals the last couple of weeks by the coaching staff because they have not played all that well. Tommy Wilcox has now come on the field. Tommy has been hurt. Didn't make it. So Tommy came out, had a look, and comes right back off, and now timeout is called with 6 minutes and 56 seconds to play in the first quarter. Alabama holds Auburn and takes over the ball at the Auburn 49. The Longhorns and Aggies say goodbye to one of college football's oldest rivalry games when they battle one last time as conference foes. Plus, another chapter is marked in one of the greatest rivalries between the Buckeyes and Wolverines. Tonight, number 25 Texas takes on Texas A&M at 8 on ESPN. And Saturday on ABC, Ohio State versus 15th-ranked Michigan at noon. College football lives here. And it's a touchdown for Oh, yeah! <laughs> watch ESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. The ESPN Networks, live anywhere. If you want to see the most college football, then order ESPN Game Plan on DirecTV. Get up to 15 out-of-market games per week, featuring the top conferences, key matchups, and great college football action you can't get anywhere else. Get the half-season offer and see the best college football with ESPN Game Plan on DirecTV. To order for only $75, call 1-800-GET-SPORTS or visit directtv.com slash game plan. ESPN Game Plan on DirecTV. This year, there are 5,000 really good reasons to support the Valerie Fund. Each has a name, a unique personality, and a family who loves them. They're the children treated at the Valerie Fund Centers for Cancer and Blood Disorders, like solid tumors, brain tumors, leukemia, and sickle cell disease. Kids like Elijah and Kristen and Terrell. Every gift makes an impact. Every gift helps heal. Believe me, some of these kids are some of the bravest kids you're ever going to meet. So go to the website and get involved. Well, let's see if that uh, gamble by Pat Dye and the Auburn Tigers backfires on him now as Alabama gets the ball first down on the Auburn 49. Walter Lewis is the quarterback out of the full wishbone. And Lewis coming left. Good runner. And he's down to the 45 for four yards. Greg Carr made the stop, a sophomore from Birmingham for Auburn. Frank, you were uh, noting a moment ago while we were away that Alabama has turned the ball over a lot this year, some, what, 30-odd times, and uh, it seemed uh, strange that they wouldn't kick that ball on down there and let Alabama have a chance to make a mistake. But a team has a tendency to self-destruct. Let them handle the ball on their end of the field. When, you make a, when they make a mistake, you have great scoring opportunities. Most coaches believe in that theory. Joe Carter is now in the backfield, number 46, as they break the bone. And they've got Jones wide out. And Lewis gives it to Joey Jones in the reverse. Auburn played it very well. They force him wide, but Jones has great speed. And Joey's quick feet gets him around the corner as he jukes an Auburn defender and gets a first down for Alabama down around the 33. David King and Tim Drinker trying to get him out of bounds. The reverse play has always been something. When I was coaching against the wishbone, it scared me to death. You have to take off and try to stop the option so quickly that you leave yourself vulnerable. 92, Riley just gets out maneuvered by Jones and he turns downfield and makes a nice play. See that big old center Steve Mott downfield throwing a block as well. So it's first down Alabama at the Auburn 33. And Lewis is, takes it out of the fullback's belly, keeps it himself, gets the 30 for three yards, hit hard by Chris Martin. Christopher nailed him. He's a senior out of Huntsville, Alabama. Second down with about seven. As Lewis gives the ball inside this time, he let the fullback have it, and Ricky Moore, the big sophomore from Huntsville, punches in there and gets another first down for Alabama. And so now the Tide marching along. They're down on the Auburn 22 with five minutes and 20 seconds to play in the first quarter and no score. The first leg of the wishbone is to pull back up the middle. The center, Steve Mott, Mike Edcock, and Gary Bram it opened up a nice hole. Some coaches feel that you just got to establish that fullback first before you can go outside. Joe Carter in at a halfback spot now. He's a junior from Starkville, Mississippi. 
Lewis back to throw it. He's got Jones over the middle, down to the corner, and it is incomplete. I think if Joey Jones had stayed on his route toward the, the goalpost, he might have broken totally free, but he turned it back into the corner, and the pass was late. The strong move to the inside, as Keith said, was to the goalpost. Number 27, King, is an outstanding defender for Auburn. Leads the team in interceptions and very good on man-for-man coverage. What patterns what we call a post corner. Ben Ross to the left, Jones to the right. Second down and ten, Lewis back. He looks over the middle, he's got a man, Jones, he's out of the end zone. Oh, they give him the touchdown. He flagged the foot. He looked me like he was going to sail right out of the end zone, but he had to drag a foot down. And it goes for a 22-yard touchdown. Jones is the only receiver on either team that's caught over two passes the ball game. Let's see if he is, in fact, legal with the reception. Remember that Jones has to make contact with the ground before he goes out of the end zone. Let's see what happens. He got his left got foot his, down. What a play. Oh, is that concentration? Outstanding play by Jones. Just barely touched that left foot down. Peter Kim is in for the extra point try, and it is good. With 4.44 to go in the first quarter, 7-0 Alabama. And Auburn's gamble did have a short view. Are the spice bottles in your kitchen out of control? Do you end up searching in every cabinet and go through bottle after bottle just to find the one you want? What you need is Swivel Store, the space-saving organizer that conveniently keeps all your spices in less than four inches of space. Just slide and swivel, and the spice you need is right at your fingertips. Swivel Store turns any cluttered mess into an organized success. Its unique design slides forward, then swivels like a revolving door, holding up to 20 spices right Right where you can see them and reach them with ease. Swivel Store fits all standard size spice bottles and containers, yet takes up no more space than this cereal box. No installation required. All you do is place Swivel Store in your cabinet. Then just slide and swivel and you've got 10 spices on this side and 10 spices on this side. So your spices are always easy to find and you get more room in your cabinets. And Swivel Store is also great for organizing your pill bottles and medications too. Perfect for instantly organizing your craft and office supplies and they clear up the clutter in workshops and garages and keep everything you need right at hand so if your spice bottles are out of control and taking up too much cabinet space call now and get your swivel store for only $19.99 it's the only organizer that slides swivels and stores up to 20 bottles and gives you more room in your cabinets but call right now and we'll double the offer and give you a second swivel store as a bonus just pay separate shipping that's one for your spices and one for your pill bottles your craft or your workshop and you get both swivel store sliding organizers for only $19.99 your satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back this is a TV only offer so call or go online now call 1-800-761-2066 to order the swivel store organizer and receive the double offer for just $19.99 plus separate processing and handling that's 1-800-761-2066 1-800-761-2066 or visit us online at buyswivelstore.com don't delay call or log on now Sunday NFL Countdown, now at 10 a.m. on ESPN. Again, a look down on the city of Birmingham. Kind of a gray, overcast day, but it's dry and fairly comfortable with the temperature in the low 60s. 7 0 Alabama first quarter. Terry Sanders kicks it off. Lionel James deep to Auburn hangs it up. James may have a chance with this in three yards deep. He's coming out. And he brings it out just short of the 25. Another look at the Alabama touchdown. Al Alabama offensive formation is stretching the defense. Two wide outs. And you can see what happens when you can stretch the defense wide. The middle is open. And you can see how wide open Jones number four is. And he makes a sensational catch, dragging his left foot. One foot is all the college rule needs to be a legal receptor. Here it is again. You can see that King is beaten on the plate, number 27. There's the drag of the foot, control the ball, touchdown. Auburn comes to the attack on first down, and they go inside. And boy, I'll tell you, the Red Elephants jump all over Greg Pratt. 
as he punches it over the 25 out to about the 27. It'll be second down and eight. And those are the figures on the Alabama scoring drive as Auburn gambled on fourth and one and gave the ball up on their own 49 and the Tide took it in. You can see the emotions that the Alabama team are playing with today. They know how important this game is for their program. Bear has made that clear, clear to them. They've got a five-man front up there right now against Auburn. And Campbell hands the ball inside. And Greg Pratt again. And there just isn't a lot of room right now in the middle of the Alabama defense. As we look at Bear Bryant on Wednesday, the last remark that he made to his team went like this. Men, you better fight when you're out there or don't plan to be back next year. And he meant it, too. Ball is on the 29. Where it is third down and six. Campbell, stand up. Hopper, no. Pass intended for Mike Edwards. Good plan. Edwards had the size advantage on the Alabama defender, but the pass was a little beyond his grasp. And so Auburn will have to punt. The last kick we had was a 30-yarder from Lewis Colbert. Keith, Alabama tried to block the last one. They must have some scouting report thinking that they could go and maybe block. They're going to send 10. Paul Carruth is the beat man for Alabama. 10 are going. And he gets it out of there, and it's a pretty good kick. Carruth backs up and takes the ball. It is 27. And comes back to the 31. It was a 44-yard punt by Colbert. Tackle made by Willie Howell. 3-11 to play first quarter. Alabama leading Auburn 7-0. When you need power this big in a space this small, you need award-winning Craftsman Innovation. Sears presents the revolutionary Craftsman Next Tech Right Angle Impact Driver. It has the best power to weight ratio in its class and delivers 700 inch-pounds of torque and 3,400 impacts per minute right where you need it to make driving even three inch lag bolts a snap. Its innovative impact mechanism and right angle design let you work at the most challenging angles in the smallest spaces. Plus, it delivers twice the torque of a conventional drill without twisting your wrist. It's ready when you are, thanks to its long life lithium ion battery. Get the Craftsman right angle impact driver for just $99.99 and receive this Craftsman 12 volt drill free, a $49 value. It's compact, yet powerful enough for everyday jobs. Hurry into Sears. Visit us online at sears.com slash innovation or call for this incredible offer. Sears, home of Craftsman. And Walter Lewis stays at quarterback with Lenny Patrick in the ball game for the first time with Joe Carter, the fullback is Ricky Moore. And it's Carter up in the slot with Lewis on a rollout left. He'll pull it down or he'll throw it. He chooses to throw it. And he throws it to Joey Jones. And the little man, 5'9, 165, a junior from Mobile, is suddenly a very big figure in this ball game. Jones had only caught 22 passes. That's just over in 10 ball games, just over two a game, but does have a 19 yard average because the wishbone forces the defense to crowd the line of scrimmage, opening up the passing lanes. They have now taken Ben Ross out at the tight end position, and they have put in Jay Grogan, number 27, who goes wide to the top of the picture. And it's a first down for Alabama, just over their own 45, handed off inside to the fullback Ricky Moore. And Moore hits midfield and just nudges the ball across midfield. Greg Carr, number 54, is just a sophomore, but the Auburn coaches say he may be the best sophomore linebacker they've ever seen. Here's a good illustration of why they say that. He takes on the block, care back, 71, brings off the block and makes the tackle. He's an exceptional student as well. Pretty close to straight A. Second down, four, 
Craig Turner now. Big fullback. 200 pounder or so is in there. And here's Walter Lewis again for this time out of bounds. And Ross had come down. Going into the ball game as a wide out and had come down to the sidelines. But Jesse was about three yards out of bounds. One thing we should point out that Walter Lewis is probably the best, may be the equal of any runner that Alabama has. He's also an outstanding passer, and when he rolls out, that puts just a terrible defensive responsibility on the defensive end and cornerback as to whether to come up or lay back. Lewis is now four out of eight, 53 yards for the touchdown. Rogan comes out. Ben Ross and Jones now are your wideouts for Alabama. Greg Turner is a very strong, straight-ahead runner. Third down. Four. Lewis outside goes to Patrick. Patrick, big game. Inside the Auburn 30. Down to the Tigers 28. First down, Alabama. Triple option, fake to the fullback. Then defensive end takes the quarterback. Alex to take the quarterback, and then Patrick, number 25, gets a block from 88. Ben Droth cuts back inside for the first down. I've been there, Keith, trying to defense the wishbone when you can throw and run off the wishbone. Watch out. Ball is just inside the Auburn 29. Two minutes to go in the first quarter. Hyde leads 7 0. Lewis flips it deep. No corner has the ball. Fumble. The ball popped up in the air. It's a foot race to the goal line. And Lewis is after him. And Walter Lewis makes the tackle on Tim Drinkard, saving the touchdown. The ball popped up in the air. And Tim Drinkard, the quarterback, plucked it. And away he flew for 62 yards. Let's watch it again. Tremendous tackle by one Auburn football player. The hit here hit the ball. Drink at number 18. The defensive cornerback. Watch him run. He has a couple of blocks. Lewis, being a fourth, six feet, finally catches him, but it's 62-yard return. And first down, Auburn at the Alabama 14. Let's see if the Tigers can catch it in. They give it to their fullback, Greg Pratt. And Pratt is rolled back from the line of scrimmage. Let's watch the play again. You can see that it's just a pitch back. The card, the ball bounces right up in the air. Number 18, Drinkard catches it and runs right down the field. Boy, that's, that's the whole point, too, Frank, that he caught it in the air. In the air. Otherwise, he could not have advanced it. <laughs> Got a paper sack rolling out on the field, so they have to get that out of the way. There was no gain by Pratt on the play up the middle. Auburn hasn't gained very, well, maybe a foot all day up the middle against Alabama. In this game last year, Auburn in the first half missed three field goal opportunities and a hat had a pass intercepted by Alabama on the one-yard line. Second down and 10 on the tied 14. Campbell's going to throw. Goes for wood. Too high. Incomplete. Alabama, It'll be third down and ten Alabama, from the Alabama, Alabama 14. Alabama, the quick out pattern this close to the goal line is seldom effective because the defense do not have to cover deep and they jump right on the wide receiver and cover him very tightly, and that was the case. They've marked that ball closer to the 13 now. So they moved it up at least a foot and a half before they had it marked before. Auburn running about 37% on third down conversions over the season. They run a little delay to Lionel James. And touchdown! Great blocking by the Auburn offensive line. Jeremiah Castillo just simply couldn't hold. Uh, 
the uh, Auburn running back James Lyon was only 5'7", 170 pounds. But he's a tough little guy. Now for the extra point try. Al Del Greco, a junior from Key Biscayne, Florida, picks it up and through. With 54 seconds to play in the first quarter, we are even. Alabama 7 and now Auburn 7. As they recover the fumble in midair, and Tim Drinkard runs it down to the 14, and Lionel James took it in, and here's the play. Fake pass and run, meaning you let the lineman cross uh, the line of scrimmage and invite him and block him outside. You see what a beautiful hole, big hole, Pat Arrington, and then a great block by someone, number 64 from Auburn, who is just a freshman, by the way. Lot, and you, James takes it in for the touchdown. Here from the ground level, watch the blocking. Invite number 98 Klein to cross the line. He takes himself out of the plate. That's what creates the hole. Then the leading block, 64, leading right through there, makes a key block. And James, number six, takes him right in for the touchdown. Number 64 is Randy Stokes. What? When you cross up the defense, it's risky, but it worked that time, Keith. Del Greco will kick off for Auburn now. Joey Jones and Paul Carruth are the deep people for Alabama. So the Plainsmen get on the board with 54 seconds to play in the first quarter. Del Greco hangs it up there. And Carruth will come back with it a yard deep in the end zone. Oh, look at this. Fine return by Paul Carruth. He, to me, is a lot like Major Ogilvy was at Alabama. Not a whole lot of speed, not flashy. He just ran the ball north and south. That's what Garut does. But he has a, a willingness that forces you to play him tough. Every good football team has players like Garut. What we call winners mean they do the best they can on every play. So that return from a yard deep in the end zone out to the 33. And Ken Coley, a senior from Birmingham, is in at quarterback now. For Alabama. Coley more a runner than a thrower. But very good on the triple option. Gonna put it up. Loops it downfield and it is incomplete. Making a try for the interception for Auburn, but nothing there. From the Alabama 33, second down and 10. Coley keeps it. Ken Coley has had three knee operations during his playing days at Alabama. But uh, this is another one of those ball players that just won't quit. And there's a fellow right there that won't quit. Pat Dye, who is exhorting his Tigers. Coaching constantly. As a rule, third and long for Alabama is a running down. Just the opposite of what we've been watching all year with teams that stress the passing game. Third and six. Coley keeps it. Got a first down. Ken Coley goes to the Auburn 49. Chuck Clinton brings him down, a junior from Pensacola. We just witnessed the quickness of Coley, the quarterback. He mentioned that he is very good on the option play because he is fast and quick. And the first quarter is over at Legion Field in Birmingham with the Crimson Tide and the Tigers all even at seven. The Longhorns and Aggies say goodbye to one of college football's oldest rivalry games when they battle one last time as conference foes. Plus, another chapter is marked in one of the greatest rivalries between the Buckeyes and Wolverines. Tonight, number 25 Texas takes on Texas A&M at 8 on ESPN. And Saturday on ABC, Ohio State versus 15th ranked Michigan at noon. College football lives here. Two days, 12 games, one conference will reign supreme. The Big Ten ACC Challenge. Tuesday, Duke, Ohio State. Wednesday, Wisconsin, North Carolina. 9.30 on ESPN. Hi. I like helping people save. Time, hassle, and the big one, money. Hundreds, in fact. If you're a progressive customer, like me. Next hundred cars, you're on the messenger. Release the savings, my friend.
we'll grab some more munchies. Be back in a sec. Cool. What's up, Clay Matthews? You want a piece of me? This ain't over, punk! Whoa, I see you met my Clay Matthews fathead. Real. Big. Fathead. Get yours at fathead.com. Lewis Colbert nailed a 57-yarder. That equals his longest run of his career. So far at Auburn, right now, Alabama's got to go to work, and they've marked him down at their own 19. Walter Lewis back in his quarterback, and he's going to throw it. And he comes over the middle with it to Ben Gross. And Ben Gross is out to the 37 for a first down. Dennis Collier hit him hard, but Big Jesse just tucked it away. Hayden Fry at SMU is the first coach that used two wideouts in the wishbone attack. It spreads the defense. You see what happens when you get speed at those wide outs and Ben draws number 88. Look how wide open he is across the middle. Lewis lays it right in for the completion. Number 24 is in the Alabama backfield now. Mickey Ginyard. So Paul Bryant continuing to shuffle his players in. They move it from uh, near the 37. Lewis, the quarterback, keeps it, turns it inside. And he runs it to the 43, Quincy Williams. Junior from Douglasville, Georgia, makes a stop on him. With two, two split receivers and a full house backfield in the wishbone, I should make the point that you lose a little bit of your running strength right up the middle. You, you don't have that tight end to block you. As we look at the pass rush so far, Alabama is just really, really putting it on them. But Auburn had one big play, the recovered fumble in the air. Second down, four. Near the 43. Lewis, back to throw. He's got Patrick to the left. He goes to Ben Gross. Jesse's open and got it. And first down Alabama at the Auburn 26. Dennis Collier, free safety, having trouble staying with Ben Gross. Acres and acres of open field when you see a team have to, has to stop the run and then cover the receiver. Watch Ben Gross. You don't see anybody in the picture. He is wide open until finally the safety man. Look how wide open he is. The safety man, Collier, has to come from over the football and try to cover him, an impossibility. Jesse comes limping off the field now. Lewis passing, six out of 10, 102 yards. Ben Ross comes off the field limping. From the Auburn 26, first down Alabama. Lewis, and Lewis to the fullback inside, Craig Turner. And Turner takes it just over the 20. Greg Card, number 54, as we've already said previously, is an outstanding linebacker. He can run to the right and left as good linebackers, but when the play is up the middle, he's got to take on the player. The blocker many times, as he does right there, he gets under the shoulder pads. Good linebacker, and then comes off and makes the play. That's an outstanding defensive play. Pitch it wide to Patrick. And Patrick is spun down behind the line of scrimmage and number 28, Bob Harris, the strong safety, penetrated to make the play. Bobby was playing almost a defensive end position once the play broke. Strong safeties can be a key personnel on your defense because they are a combination linebacker, in and cornerback. On that occasion, he just penetrated immediately and wouldn't be blocked. The loss is back to the 22. Daryl White now comes in at a wideout position for Alabama. Walter Lewis having a big first half. A total of over 100 yards. Third down and seven. And they hand it inside, and there's nothing there for Patrick. Number 63 was the man that made the first contact with him, playing middle guard James Wallace, a six-footer. Sophomore from Gadsden, Alabama. He weighs 260 pounds. Alabama gambled on the draw play on third and long. Auburn was ready for it, forcing a tempted field goal. Peter Kim will try the field goal from 37 yards, and from that distance, he is four out of five in 1982. It's up, plenty of leg on it, and it's good. Eight minutes and 31 seconds to play in the first half. And Peter Kim gives Alabama the lead over Auburn 10 to 7. 
Are the spice bottles in your kitchen out of control? Do you end up searching in every cabinet and go through bottle after bottle just to find the one you want? What you need is Swivel Store, the space-saving organizer that conveniently keeps all your spices in less than four inches of space. Just slide and swivel, and the spice you need is right at your fingertips. Swivel Store turns any cluttered mess into an organized success. Its unique design slides forward, then swivels like a revolving door, holding up to 20 spices right where you can see them and reach them with ease. Swivel Store fits all standard size spice bottles and containers, yet takes up no more space than this cereal box. No installation required. All you do is place Swivel Store in your cabinet. Then, just slide and swivel and you've got 10 spices on this side and 10 spices on this side. So your spices are always easy to find and you get more room in your cabinets. And Swivel Store is also great for organizing your pill bottles and medications too. Perfect for instantly organizing your craft and office supplies and they clear up the clutter in workshops and garages and keep everything you need right at hand. So if your spice bottles are out of control and taking up too much cabinet space, call now and get your swivel store for only $19.99. It's the only organizer that slides, swivels, and stores up to 20 bottles and gives you more room in your cabinets. But call right now and we'll double the offer and give you a second swivel store as a bonus. Just pay separate shipping. That's one for your spices and one for your pill bottles, your craft or your workshop and you get both swivel store sliding organizers for only $19.99. Your satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. This is a TV only offer so call or go online now. Call 1-800-761-2066 to order the swivel store organizer and receive the double offer for just $19.99 plus for processing and handling. That's 1-800-761-2066 1-800-761-2066 or visit us online at buyswivelstore.com Don't delay. Call or log on now. A good year, Blimp America, bringing you that picture as Terry Sanders has the ball on the tee for Alabama and will kick it off. And he's going to go into the wind. Lionel James drifting across. Yard deep in the end zone is coming out. And tries to break it to the sidelines and just could not get there. Stan Gay, the first man to hit him for Alabama. Jesse Bendross. With ice on the knee. She came hoppling off the field, but the report is that Jesse will be able to play more. The ball is at the 18. On 18. As we look at Ben Dross's numbers for the season, you notice 21 yard average per reception, which is not unusual if you have a wishbone running attack to help you. Auburn's running attack has been virtually nil so far today. Alabama leading now 10 to 7. Campbell gives it inside. Two yards to Bo Jackson. I think we make it three. They're giving the 21. Keith, we should make the point that Jackson has never played fullback before. Auburn had an off week to practice this, but it's hard for a freshman to come in and play a new position in two weeks' time and perform against a team as good as Alabama. First time Auburn different. has shown the eye formation this season. And they were hoping to be able to pop Jackson out of the eye and get some yardage out of him. As Campbell going wide the line of James, he gets there's not enough people out there to help him around the corner. Alabama's defensive flow is outstanding. Mike Pitts, the defensive end, strung it out and stood his ground. Well, Pitts weighs 255 pounds, stands six foot four, all southeastern conference, really one of the finest defensive ends in the Southeastern Conference, if not America. As we look at the Bear, and don't think he's not coaching and getting involved. He does. He may talk that he doesn't. He may give you that impression. He's still running the show. From the 23, third down, five for Auburn. Alabama now totaling 228 yards on offense. And Auburn, 67 prior to that play, which is good to the 29 and close to a first down with Bo Jackson carry. There's the uh, difference so far in this ball game offensively. Alabama's been able to throw the football. Auburn coaches told me as we watched for the measurement that they didn't think they could win the game if they didn't hit some passes. Key situations, they've been unsuccessful so far. He got it by the nose of the ball. Al Auburn is lining up in two tight ends, eye formation, one split receiver, which is really a goal line attack. 
Not much threat of a big run there, a big play, unless James can pop it on his own natural ability. That's trying to get one wide receiver out of the ball game. We've got two tight ends, and he had Edwards and Woods both in the ball game of 12 players. <laughs> now get back to the legal limit. First down for Auburn. And blindsided. Campbell is hit by John Elias, the nose guard. And then making a flying effort to grab that ball was Russ Wood. But Russ couldn't quite get it. You're going to see Campbell throw the ball right to Wood to tight end. I mean, the defensive end, excuse me. Mike Woods right here is going to throw the ball out to James, but Woods comes in front and nearly intercepts it, which could have been a touchdown. Ball was thrown too hard for him to handle. 240-pounder climbing on your back, though, it doesn't help your accuracy much, does it? Right off of his blind side, quarterback's blind side. Second down and 10, just outside the 28. Ride it off to the inside. And carrying is Ron O'Neill. Ron O'Neill, 5'9", 245, but he can't produce much. He gets it up to the 30. Oh, it'll be third down and about eight. They swing it over to Lionel James. Get him out there one-on-one, -on -one, and it doesn't do much good because Robbie Jones, number 97, a senior from Demopolis, Alabama, just looked him right in the eye and took him down. Oh, it'll be fourth down. Jones making the tackle. Auburn unable to get much going offensively so far in the ball game. It'll be the fourth punt of the day for Lewis Colbert. His last one was a beauty, 57 yards, and Paul Carruth is deep for Alabama. You see the fullback calling the blocking assignments after he reads the alignment. Well, they got some pressure on him, but again, Colbert hits a good high-hanging punt, not as long as the other one, but it's a very effective punt, forcing the fair catch for Alabama back at the 27, a 44-yarder. You can see that Alabama is coming right through. They have one, he must be a three-step kicker, very slow. One, two, that's his second step. Third step, Alabama gets very close to this. You can see the... That's Rodriguez, Mike Rodriguez. Rodriguez. His hands, if he'd extended them, he might have been able to, to deflect the ball. So it's Alabama's ball. First down at their own 27. Tied leading the Tigers, 10-7. to 5-12 to play in the first half. And Walter Lewis fumbles the ball. It is picked up by the trailing back, Jeff Fagan. And a loss on the play back to about the 22. The comparison of quarterbacks in this ball game, and you see here Todd Blackledge yesterday threw 24 times, hit 10 uh, for a touchdown. And he has 22 for the season as Penn State won the big ball game against Pitt. And Nebraska beat Oklahoma in another good one. Penn State going to the Sugar Bowl to take on the Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia scuffling this afternoon with Georgia Tech between the hedges and Athens. Other scores from yesterday's ball game there. Red Raiders of Colgate had a pretty good season. It is second down and 15. From the 22, pressure's on. Lewis is, throws a dime trail out there, and it's picked off by Bob Harris. He was getting pressure from the blind side, and his arm must have been hit because that ball just came fluttering out there like an old lame-legged turkey. And Bob Harris stepped right in there and picked it off. The backside rush is what really worries the quarterback and the coaches. He cannot see it. You're going to see coming back there, who is that, uh, number 99, 99, Smith. And he gets his arm, and watch the ball. It just flutters up like a wounded duck. And it comes right down into the hands of Harris from Decatur, Georgia, my old hometown. And that's Harris's fourth interception of the season. Number 28, Harris, the strong safety. You can see he reads the ball, goes up in front of the receiver, Fagan, and intercepts the pass. So it's a big chance for Auburn now from the Alabama 25. And Campbell goes with it, and he almost throws an interception. My goodness, he threw the ball right straight toward Jeremiah Castile. And Castile could not pull it down. The Auburn defense has set up the offense now. Remember, it was Tim Drinker who picked that loose fumble out of the air and ran 62 yards. That set up the 14-yard play for the touchdown. And now here is uh, Bob Harris, who's made another big defensive play for the Titans. He go to your old high school. He went to my old high school, Decatur, Georgia. You never know how from Georgia, would you? 
<laughs> Second down and ten. And Campbell wants to throw again. Goes over the middle. Has a man. Edwards. And Mike Edwards hauls it down at the Alabama 11. First down for Auburn. Play action pass. Handcuffs the linebackers. Edwards is going to drift across the middle. The ball is thrown right in the numbers. The best place to throw it when you're going across that middle. Edwards has played halfback, fullback, tight end, wide receiver. Just a very versatile play. He's wide open. Hand, linebackers cuffed with, handcuffed with the fate. They mark it inside the 10. So we're going to have to call it nine yards away. First and goal from the nine. It's actually about nine and a half. And Lionel James a hole. And James almost loses the ball as he is hit. But he has enough of a handle to take it down at the four. Jeremiah Castile, left side quarterback, hit him hard. That's a big pickup on first and goal. They got a little more than five yards on it. Good blocking by Jackson, the right halfback, the freshman, and also the fullback, Neal, clearing the path. Alabama leading 10 to 7 with 315 to go in the first half. And Auburn trying to regain, uh, trying to take the lead for the first time. Second down and goal inside the five, handed off up the middle of the fullback, and he surges down to about the two. So it'll be third and goal from the Alabama two. They want a timeout to talk, it appears. And they take it. So you've got three minutes and one second to play in the first half. 10-7 Alabama lead. Guys, pay attention. How would you like to have an extra two inches? If your height makes you feel overlooked at work or embarrassed because you're shorter than your date, now you can level the playing field with Max Tall the revolutionary ultra comfortable shoe inserts that give you inches in height so you can look taller instantly with the deluxe version you can go from 5'9 to over six feet max tall's durable one size fits all design and multiple adjustable levels let you go from a quarter inch to almost three inches instantly and they're completely invisible no one will know you're wearing them the secret is Max Tall's exclusive ortho gel material. Other rigid lifts are uncomfortable and your foot can easily slip out of your shoe. But Max Tall molds to your foot and heel to create vacuum action that ensures your heel will always stay in your shoe. Poor Mike is 5'9 and Cindy isn't paying attention to him at all. But with Max Tall in his shoes, Mike is nearly six feet tall and Cindy likes what she sees. Max Toll is one size fits all and is perfect for work and play, for men and women. Statistics prove being taller means more confidence, more attention, and more success. Call right now and order your Max Toll inserts for the incredibly low price of $19.99. But wait, on this exclusive offer, we'll send you a second set of Max Toll absolutely free. That's two Max Toll inserts for just $19.99. That's right, two pairs of Max Toll inserts for just $19.99. And don't forget to ask our operators about free shipping. But you have to call now. To order Max Tall, have your credit card ready and call 1 800 578 1196. That's 1 800 578 1196. Clouds continue gray, kind of heavy, but no rain so far today. Now here comes Auburn on third down and two. Tommy Wilcox is on the field and has been out there in the Alabama secondary, in case you were curious about it. The All-American. They're going to go out of the wishbone and Campbell down the line, turns it, keeps it for the goal line, touchdown! Russ Wood, defensive end for Alabama, had a hold of Campbell, but Randy just hung in there. And when he turned back to his right, he was able to fall across the goal line, and Auburn has taken the lead. Now going for the extra point. Greco. Mike Mann holds it. And 
Del Greco. Hits it. Good. Two minutes 55 to go in the first half. 14 10 Auburn. Number 74. Watch number 74, the pulling guard. He gets right in the way of Campbell. Number 74, as he turns up, he actually blocks Campbell first right there. He nearly tackles him. Now Campbell twists and turns and gets across the goal line for the touchdown. Ask me. Even if you think you can live with your old mattress, Ask me how I've never slept better. Why not talk to one of the six million people who've switched to the most highly recommended bed in America? It's not a Sealy, a Simmons, or a Serta. Ask me about my Tempur-Pedic. Ask me how I can finally sleep all night. Ask me how great my back feels every morning. Did you know there's a Tempur-Pedic for everybody? Tempur-Pedic beds now come in soft, firm, and everything in between. Ask me how I don't wake up anymore when he comes to bed. These are real Tempur-Pedic owners. Ask someone you know. Check out Twitter or your friends on Facebook. You'll hear it all, unedited. Tempur-Pedic brand owners are more satisfied than owners of any traditional mattress brand. Now, just in time for the holidays, you have the chance to win the perfect gifts from Tempur-Pedic, including the bed of your dreams. Our Snuggle Up and Win sweepstakes starts soon. Enter at snuggleupandwin.com today. Tempur-Pedic, the most highly recommended bed in America. Listen up, America! Listen up, America. The recent health care bill will not take effect until at least 2014, leaving families and individuals lacking health insurance with no immediate solution to their concerns. But here's the good news. A health insurance hotline has been established to provide affordable health insurance for all uninsured Americans. And yes, uninsured Americans with pre-existing conditions. Call the health insurance hotline now and get you and your family covered today. The Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio. TCU is going to win one for the ages. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Touchdown, Oklahoma! The All-State Sugar Bowl. It's kicked off. That'll do it. The Discover Orange Bowl. Right the opening for the touchdown. And the All-State BCS National Championship game. The Auburn Tigers are college football's best. ESPN, the BCS lives here. Seconds to play in the first half. Alabama owns the football first down at the Auburn 39 with the running quarterback Ken Coley in the ball game and he just completed a pass to Darrell White for the first down. 14-10 Auburn lead. Then Gross is wide to the top of the picture. Coley almost falls down coming off the snap. He's in some pressure now and he's got to run it and he hits the chalk. Back up around the 40, just outside the 40. Well, he's out of bounds, and he's going to lose about a yard and a half or two. The man that was making life miserable for him is big 99, Doug Smith, and 98, Gerald Williams. A pair of defensive tackles, Williams being a freshman. Glory be, Frank, you ever see so many big freshmen? 6'4", 269, <laughs> that one. That's your halftime coming up. Very interesting report relative to black coaches in college football. Walter Lewis now is in at quarterback. 12 seconds to play in the first half. Second down and 12. And Lewis straight back. He's very quick. Oh, he's got Ben Gross in the end zone wide open. He hits right on the sidelines and gets a first down. He didn't see Ben Gross. Ben Gross was all by himself following. Woo, look at me. And he never saw it. There's Ben Dross. You can see he's going to cross and go out to the right. And when when Lewis scrambles to the left with his quickness, number 47, King runs all the way across the field. Number 27, I don't know why he did this. Look how wide open he is for a touchdown, but he couldn't get the ball back to him or he didn't see it. As White we, was shaken up on his catch. Darrell White getting the first down for Alabama at the Auburn 15. White's just going to get over close to the boundary. If he can catch the ball, he wants to get out of bounds. Stop the clock as quick as you can. Get out of bounds. Now Alabama has a field goal opportunity. White coming off the field and a 33-yard kick coming up by Peter Kim with two ticks remaining on the clock in the first half. The holder is quarterback Paul Field. That is good. Hold is good. Kick by Kim is good. 
And so time runs out in the first half as Alabama gets a 33 yard field goal, the second by Ken today. But Auburn leads at halftime by 14 to 13. Mort, Adam, what do you got for us? Four perps, three hostages. One perp has turf toe, but he looks probable for the getaway. All right, guys, bring it in. What are we going to do against the 4-3? Don't worry, Key. We got them 10. Let's put them in bag them. One, three. One, two. Wait. Before we go in, I just want to say something. I love you guys. I knew we should have went on two. Sunday NFL Countdown, presented by IBM. Sundays at 10 a.m. on ES. Celebrate another St. Louis Cardinals World Series title with Sports Illustrated's exclusive championship package. You'll get this must-have official 2011 World Series DVD, plus this limited edition hardcover book. Relive the Cardinals' postseason heroics with MLB Productions' amazing video and SI's famous writing and photography. Go to SIOffer.com or call now to get both free with a paid subscription. 56 issues for only $1.59 an issue. Save 65% off the cover price. Use your credit or debit card and get this officially licensed championship baseball honoring the St. Louis Cardinals. Designed exclusively for SI, it features the World Series and team logos, plus a special display queue. Don't miss this terrific offer. Go to SIOffer.com or call now to get the official DVD, the commemorative book, and the collectible baseball. This incredible package is all free and only available from Sports Illustrated. Call or go online now. We're at halftime at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. Auburn leading Alabama 14 to 13. Here is Ann Simon with Coach Paul Bryant. Of course, uh, this man needs no introduction. Coach Paul Bear Bryant, both Keith Jackson and Frank Royals were wondering during the broadcast why you elected to go with Ken Coley at quarterback instead of Walter Lewis. Trying to win the game. Uh, Everything I do, I'm trying to win the game. No reason for it, just for that. I'm trying to win the game. I apologize for who I play. I'm trying to win the game. What about the turnover situation? There was a there was a turnover two there. Two turnovers really causes two touchdowns. And what do you elect to do in, in the second half that you may what? change that? You're having problems with turnovers all year long. Well, we sure have, and we're going to try to not turn over this time. We're going to try to receive the football, tell you for touchdown. All right, Coach, thank you. Of course, of course Paul Bear Bryant is a man of very few words, but when you're in his shoes, we're, our actions speak louder than words, I think. Keith? All right, we'll see what happens in this second half of play with Auburn leading by a score of 14 to 13. And uh, let's take a look now at some of the highlights out of the first half as Walter Lewis goes over the middle, 22 yards to Joey Jones for the touchdown. A marvelous catch and presence by Jones as he just touches the left foot down for the score. All he needs is one, and he got it down right there. Now it is the Auburn defense that has provided the opportunity for the Tigers. The fumble recovery, it pops up in the air here. Ball is pitched out to Joe Carter. Now Carter gets hit, ball pops out. Tim Drinkard will pick it up and run 62 yards with it. He almost scored, Frank would have if Walter Lewis hadn't run him down. I was wondering who made the tackle but it was uh, Darmany, the safety man, who's been an outstanding player. He popped the ball out, and drinking number 18 picks it up, and Lewis shows his speed, the quarterback of Alabama, as he catches Drinkard and knocks him out of bounds after 62-yard return. Now, from the 14, third down and 10 for Auburn, Lionel James, one of the smallest running backs on either ball club, fields it around the right side. The Auburn offensive front does a great job of blocking, and little Lionel takes it in. A freshman, Stokes, starting his first ball game at left guard, pulled around and made the key block. And then Auburn's second touchdown came on a two-yard run by Randy Campbell after Bob Harris had intercepted on the Alabama 25. We start the second half, a bouncing kickoff to Paul Carruth. Carruth looking for the sidelines, gets out there and turns it upfield for a good game as Alabama will start first down at its 33. That was a 30-yard return by Carruth. Alabama opens, we presume, with Lewis, Fagan, Carruth, Moore, Jones. So Coach Bryant has played a lot of people in that first half. The offensive front will be Ben Gross, Vickers, Bramblett, Mott, Adcock, Kayavec. And it is Walter Lewis at quarterback, with Ben Gross coming to the bottom of the picture. 
Lewis, 7 out of 12 for 128 yards and a touchdown. He's run seven times and picked up 19 yards on the ground. And Lewis coming to the open side of the field. Comes it. He had something on the pass. Rolling to his left. He can drill it. And he nails Vendross on the numbers for a first down up at the 46. Remember that Alabama's quarterback is just as good a runner as he is passer. That really forces the cornerback to come up, opening up the crease right to Jones. And he puts the ball right on the numbers. And a first down for the Tide at their own 46, just starting the second half of play. Auburn 14, Alabama 13. Auburn throwing a four-man front. Three linebackers are in tight. They're going to reverse it, give that ball, back it goes. And it's a delayed version of the old flea flicker. Now that turns into a screen. And carrying the ball, Ricky Moore. And we've got an Auburn man hurt on the play. An Auburn man is down on the field. Scott Riley, a defensive end, 204-pounder from Birmingham. Ben Thomas, big tackle for Auburn, 267. Dow Aukman, the middle guard, 263. Doug Smith, right tackle, 265. And Quincy Williams, the end, 218. Linebackers, Greg Carr, sophomore, 213. And Christopher Martin, 232 pounds. Auburn man leaving the field is number 28, Bob Harris. Harris was coming after Walter Lewis on a, a slowed down version of the old flea flicker play. It started out as a big wide reverse and then back to Lewis and then eventually turned into something of a screenplay for the fullback, Ricky Moore. And it was good for two yards. Lewis straight back on second down and eight. Loops it out here to Moore again. He, the man in front missed his block, but Moore outruns the pursuit and goes for another Alabama first down. So they're getting the Auburn defense spread out, Frank, and they're making it work. Here are the stats for the first half. Alabama dominating in every category except the two turnovers that were very costly. When you're in Auburn's position, your coach has to try to analyze what's wrong with our offense. Is it the fact that we're calling the wrong plays or getting whipped? To me, they were just getting whipped in the offensive line by the Alabama defense. That's major problems. Ball just short of the Auburn 41. First down for the tie. Alabama trying to get it going early here. Give that ball to Turner and Craig Turner. Veers off to the right side, turns it back up field, moves it to the 36 of Auburn. Doug Smith brought him down. He's a big junior from Bayburg, Bayboro, North Carolina. Today's attendance, Keith Legion Field, 76,300. Wall-to-wall sellout. Why wouldn't it be? Split right down the middle, half to Auburn, half to Alabama in the tickets. Second down and five tied. Lewis, he's got Bendross over there at a first down. And Jesse is dragged down by David King, number 27 for Auburn. That'll advance the ball to the Auburn 25. And a first down. It's so. a checkoff play, Keith. You can see that Bendross was singly covered, no one around him. The defensive back, King, was off of him a good 10 yards, giving him plenty of time to catch the ball. And actually, King makes a great play to stop him from advancing after the catch. Bob Harris, who was shaken up, walked off the field. Apparently, no serious injury, just shaken up. Lewis is four for four in this possession for Alabama. Gives that ball off to the fullback Moore, and Ricky Moore is inside the 20. Bounced down at the 18. So the Alabama offense looks pretty determined to start this second half. What the what Alabama is doing is really giving. Uh, Auburn defense adjustment problems with the two split ends. They're trying to cover the passes and they're trying to defend the run and uh, Alabama quarterback Lewis is just changing the play at the line to hit the weakness. Give more seven on the carry. Second down three. There goes the big guy up the middle again. He's inside the ten. He's down to the eight. Christopher Martin brought him down and it's first and goal to go Alabama. Excellent block on the left side. You can see that the nose man, the center, Mott, picks up the off linebacker. The nose man was over him, but he just reaches out and picks up the linebacker who was keying on the fullback 
and he couldn't make the tackle. Ricky Moore now nine carries and 65 yards. Lewis outside the roof. Touchdown. Option play. The end elects to take the quarterback for Ruth 16. Good block from Jones. As I said earlier, here's Jones the block. Watch Jones. He's not very big, but he has to block on the goal line. The quarterback out. He makes the contact and line for Ruth to go in for the touchdown. Eight plays for 66 yards. Alabama's going for two. Lewis. Throws it over the middle. He was under pressure, tried to hit Paul Carruth over the middle. Paul coming back to the ball, but he seemed to lose his balance a little bit and couldn't come back quite far enough. And as he fell, the ball came loose. So the five for two failed. 12 22 third quarter, Alabama 19, Auburn 14. Can't seem to find the right size wrench. Are you tired of searching for the right tool? Introducing the Loggerhead Bionic Wrench. It's 14 wrenches in one. Any size, just squeeze and turn. The patented design produces a powerful mechanical advantage. Pliers and adjustable wrenches can strip the corners, but that won't stop the Bionic because it grips on all six sides. Simply squeeze and turn. American made and a proven winner. No more guessing. Easy to use. Adjust like pliers. The Bionic Wrench is 14 wrenches in one. Everyone needs one at home or on the road. With patented gripping power, the Bionic grips them all. It's a gripping experience. Countless uses for the Bionic Wrench makes a great gift for everyone on your holiday list. 100% American made, limited lifetime warranty. Get the Bionic Wrench today for only $19.99 at Sears. Hurry into Sears, visit us online at sears.com slash innovation, or call for this incredible offer. Mort, Adam, what do you got for us? Four perps, three hostages. One perp has turf toe, but he looks probable for the getaway. All right, guys, bring it in. What are we going to do against the 4-3? Don't worry, Key. We got them pinned. Let's put them in bag them. On three. One, two, wait. Before we go in, I just want to say something. I love you guys. I knew we should have went on two. Sunday NFL Countdown, presented by IBM. Sundays at 10 a.m. on ESPN. Down at about eight for Alabama on the Auburn side of the field, and Ken Coley is in at quarterback, and he's loose. And Kenny dives past the marker for a first down at the Auburn 35. What Alabama is doing with the offense is just sensational. They're moving their line around, moving their formation, running, rolling out left, right, play action passes on first down over half of the time. Auburn has never been able to set their defense. Now that Alabama's 405 yards in total offense as to 117 for Auburn. Deep, Auburn's defense is the only thing in kicking game that's keeping them in the ball game. They mark Coley down at the 36 for the first down. Gives it off to the first man, the fullback, and he's dropped at the 35, Ricky Moore. It does not look like a football team that has lost three games. Self-destruct, 32 turnovers for Alabama in 10 ball games, 22 fumbles, 10 interceptions. As we look at Pat Dye, who is very worried right now, his defense has not been able to really do anything to stop the Alabama offense. Second down and nine, tied. All at the Auburn 35. Holy, on the option, going the other way. Look at that. You don't think he isn't quick? It doesn't have a sense of where the pressure is. That's another first down for Alabama. Coley has had three knee operations. Number 11, the quarterback. The play is to go to the left. It's an option play. Auburn has it defense perfectly. But watch the presence of mind, as he said. And another thing that we should mention, the Alabama offense has played most of the ball game, at, and the Auburn defense must be getting tired. And Coley makes a fine play for the first down. 
Nine carries, 53 yards for Ken. First down, Alabama. Ball at the Auburn 20. Big guy, Moore, the fullback, to about the 17. Alabama's strategy is we look at Paul Bear, Brian, and Pat Dye, the two coaches, had coached for Bear for about 10 years here at Alabama before he left and went to East Carolina, Wyoming, and back to Auburn, to the state of Alabama and to Auburn. Moore now is rolling along. Uh, Ricky's got 78 yards on 14 carries. Big day for him. Big day offensively for Alabama. Second down, seven. They ran out for 25 seconds. That's going to cost him five yards. Holy was checking off, looking to change his play. And well, Keith, when you when you line up in the wishbone with two wide receivers, one on each side, you have to use the audibles to take advantage of the weakness of the defense. Delay, offense, 25 second infraction, second down. What Alabama is doing, if they single cover the receivers, they pass. If they double cover, they run the football. It's very simple. But stopping it is very difficult. Second down and 12. Ball comes back out to the 22. Coley gives it to the halfback. And Joe Carter takes it down to the 10. From the end zone, watch the beautiful blocking. Auburn has spread their defense to cover the receivers. Trap block. Moore, the fullback, makes the block. But Joe Carter really breaks around and makes a fine play, but the key block was Gary Bramlin, the offensive guard, number 68. The ball is right on the 10-yard line. First and goal to go for Alabama at the Auburn 10. Alabama 19, Auburn 14. The drive started at the 6-yard line of Alabama. Holy shows it to the fullback and gives it to the fullback. Moore to the 5. Second down and goal with 3-10 to play in the third quarter. Isn't it a great thing for a coach to have two quarterbacks keep one this outstanding pass and a good runner he gets bunged up a little bit and his substitute comes in and moves the team from the six yard line to the opponent's four yard line mixing up running and passing just inside the five second down and goal Give it to the big guy, and they'll give him to about the four, and that'll do it. It's Ben Thomas, the big sophomore from Ashburn, Georgia, rose up to make the stop for Auburn. In terms of good offense, mixing up the offense, listen to this. Alabama's rushed for 219 yards, and they've passed for exactly 219 so far in the ballgame. Ball is still just inside the five. Third down and goal. Matter of starch here. If Alabama takes it uh, 94 yards and sticks it in, it'll take starch out of Auburn. If the Auburn defense can get out of here with a field goal, that'll brace them up. As Coley turns it up field to the one. Fourth and goal. How close is it? If it's close inside of one, you will go for it. If it's outside of one, or close to two yards, you'll go for the field goal. It's inside the one. He's still going for the field goal to get eight point lead. Field goal would get him eight points. Kim today, Peter Kim has hit from 37 and from 33. This will be a chip shot. And he is one out of three. Inside the 20. Hold is good. The kick is up. Penalty flag on the, fa on the field. It, if it is against Auburn, that means it's going to be fourth and a foot. Does he take the three points? Or does he wipe it off and uh, go for the touchdown? He's going for the touchdown. Going for the touchdown. He's going back in there if it's against Auburn. Here, in comes the running backs at least. Though his two captains are coming out to get the call. That's what that was. His two captains are coming out to see exactly what the call is. Here comes the third one, Tommy Wilcox. All three captains are out there, 15 men. <laughs> <laughs> I've only seen Illegal one time. Procedure. It. Offense. Oh, it's against no. Alabama. Encroachment. Defense. Whoops. No play. Replay it, it down. Play it over. 
team I've only seen one time in my life where a team took the three points off the goal line. It was Oklahoma in a game against Colorado, and they took the three points off and didn't make the touchdown. Lost the three points and lost the ball. Oh. <clears throat> He'll stay with the field goal unit. Peter Kim. I might add that three points wasn't a factor in the score, in the final score. Now it's an 18 yarder. 18 yards. Second time he's hit it from there. And the second time he has knocked it through. But this time it counts. And Alabama builds its lead 22 to 14. Guys, pay attention. How would you like to have an extra two inches? If your height makes you feel overlooked at work or embarrassed because you're shorter than your date, now you can level the playing field with Max Tall, the revolutionary ultra comfortable shoe inserts that give you inches in height so you can look taller instantly. With the deluxe version, you can go from 5'9 to over six feet. Max Tall's durable one size fits all design and multiple adjustable levels let you go from a quarter inch to almost three inches instantly, and they're completely invisible. No one will know you're wearing them. The secret is Max Tall's exclusive ortho gel material. Other rigid lifts are uncomfortable, and your foot can easily slip out of your shoe. But Max Toll molds to your foot and heel to create vacuum action that ensures your heel will always stay in your shoe. Poor Mike is 5'9", and Cindy isn't paying attention to him at all. But with Max Toll in his shoes, Mike is nearly six feet tall, and Cindy likes what she sees. Max Toll is one size fits all and is perfect for work and play, for men and women. Statistics prove being taller means more confidence, more attention, and more success. Call right now and order your Max Toll inserts for the incredibly low price of $19.99. But wait, on this exclusive offer, we'll send you a second set of Max Toll absolutely free. That's two Max Toll inserts for just $19.99. That's right, two pairs of Max Toll inserts for just $19.99. And don't forget to ask our operators about free shipping. But you have to call now. To order Max Tall, have your credit card ready and call 1-800-578-1196. That's 1-800-578-1196. Right in the Goodyear Blimp America with that picture. Legion Field in Birmingham. Now Auburn with the ball. First down. Ball at the 27. Randy Campbell, who is three for eight for 32 yards in passing. That is a great part of the story of Auburn's failure to move the ball offensively against Alabama today. That pitch goes outside to Lionel James, and he gets it around the corner and gets decent gain out of it before Jeremiah Castillo and Emmanuel King. Number six, Lionel James, has had a sensational career for Auburn. Now gained 50 yards today on 11 carries. The ball is marked just outside the 34. It'll be second down about three. Bo Jackson looking out of the tailback spot. He breaks it big. Inside the Alabama 15. Out of bounds at the tied 13. Tommy Wilcox and Jeremiah Castillo had a little bit of an angle on him. Otherwise, they would have never caught him. 52 yards. Watch the blocking on your left. Lionel James, number six. He just rolled up the cornerback, made the place possible. You see Jackson, just a freshman, make a sensational run, getting off it. Watch the corner of your screen. Watch Jack James rolled up the uh, Wilcox, the strong safety, and then Jackson made the free safety miss him, which was uh, blue. Big gain and another opportunity for Auburn. First down at the Alabama 13. And they hand it inside. And it goes to Greg Pratt, the fullback. 220 pounder, spins it down to about the nine. Ethan, going back to that last play, in looking at film, Lionel James is the best one-on-one -on -one blocker for a back in the wishbone attack that I've ever seen play. Mark that ball just inside the eight. Give the uh, Pratt five yards on that carry and make it second down and five. 
There's word. I don't blame him. Again. Inside with it. And uh, Campbell trying to come off that snap. That's the second time today that he has got tangled up coming off the snap. He never really delivered the ball. It looked like the left guard, Stokes, who happens to be a freshman, retreated a little bit, got right in his feet, right in, uh, tangled up with Campbell's feet, the quarterback. So it's third down and still about five. They ran the draw play. Here Expensive before. play, that one. Double wide. Out of the wishbone. Campbell getting pressure from the backside, and they get him down at about the six. It was one of those defensive ends. I think it was Mike Pitts coming from the backside. It was. It's good call. Mike Pitts. Keith Mike was playing on the left side because he's playing towards a tight end. He came all the way across the line, all the way across to catch the quarterback. And now Auburn will send out the field goal unit with nine minutes and 20 seconds to play in the ball game. Al Del Greco. Try one from 23 yards. Well, Greco kicked six, six field goals against the Tucker this season. Up there, and it's good. So Del Greco hits from 23, and with 9:06 to play in the ball game, Auburn is still in the hunt. Alabama 22, and Auburn 17. The Longhorns and Aggies say goodbye to one of college football's oldest rivalry games when they battle one last time as conference foes. Plus, another chapter is marked in one of the greatest rivalries between the Buckeyes and Wolverines. Tonight, number 25 Texas takes on Texas A&M at 8 on ESPN. And Saturday on ABC, Ohio State versus 15th-ranked Michigan at noon. College football lives here. Happy birthday! Thank you, dear Bruce. You're welcome. Thank you. You make me Look feel coming. so young. You make me feel so spring has sprung. <laughs> and every time I see you. You're not fooling anybody, you know. <laughs> Think young. Pass it on. <laughs> a message from the Foundation for a Better Life. I'm going to grab some more munchies. Be back in a sec. Cool. What's up, Clay Matthews? You want a piece of me? This ain't over, punk! Whoa, I see you met my Clay Matthews fathead. Real. Big. Fathead. Get yours at fathead.com. Well, things are buzzing at Legion Field right now as Auburn has the football. First down, just short of the Alabama 30. Three and a half minutes to play in the game. And Alabama leading by five points. Randy Campbell on third and 14, through for 15 to get the first down. Campbell puts it up again, goes to Edwards and throws it behind him. Edwards was open right in front of Castile. But Campbell missed him. Just the perfect time to blitz for Alabama. You're in trouble, go after it. Opponents, make something happen. Wilcox was coming from the wide side of the field and Gay from the corner, from the back side. Second and 10 for Auburn. Six-man front, Wilcox is up on the line. And over the middle it goes for Chris Wood. It is intercepted by Castile. I think they're going to call Castile for pass interference. I believe it's a good call. Castile hit the receiver before the ball was there. Auburn had a, uh, Alabama had a safety blitz on. That's the reason there was no safety man playing man-for-man -man coverage. Castile has intercepted seven passes, 16 in his career. All-American on this, uh, most of the teams this year. It'll be first down and goal to go for Auburn. Inside the Alabama 10. Defensive pass interference. 
Watch Woods. Touchdown. Woods has territorial rights. Castillo, number 19, cannot make contact before the ball gets to the receiver. There it is, right there. Contact. The safety blitz was on. Man-for-man -man coverage is what Alabama was playing. Very good call by the officials. Now, Auburn Keith has first down on the nine, which is the toughest place to have yep. a first down. That's right. If you're going to get one inside the ten, please let me have it on the six or the five, not on the nine. Well, my goodness. First and goal from the nine. Penalty flags down as the ball goes to Jackson, and the whistle stop it. Both sides were moving, and I don't know who moved first. Well, the tight end did move, number 85. Ed West, but I don't know whether he was drawn or not. Mm, it's against Auburn. Oh my goodness, poise, poise, poise. Well, that makes it first and fifth and 14, Keith, and that's hard. Red ball foul, illegal procedure, offense. Auburn had the football at the Georgia 14, first down. And couldn't put it in with a chance to beat Georgia. It was three minutes on the clock, and uh, Georgia stopped them to preserve their victory. Now it's first and goal at the Alabama 14 after the five-yard penalty, and Campbell back to throw. Going for Chris Woods, no! Defending Castile. Second down and goal. Auburn, as we look at Bear Bryant, who is, has to be worried. Watch the play of Castile and Woods. One on one, number 19. Castile has already been selected, all American. He's got outside responsibility. He's beaten deep. The ball was thrown too far to the outside. If Campbell could have laid it up over the head of Castile, it could have possibly been a touchdown. Three minutes and 14 seconds to play in the game. Alabama leading by five. Safety blitz. There it comes. Outside the Bo Jackson. And Jackson is cut down at the 10. And the man who had the pressure on him was number 89, Russ Wood. When I say safety blitz, the most unusual free safety blitz, which yeah. is coming up the middle. Normally when we say safety blitz, we're talking about Wilcox coming from the corner. The Wilcox was coming from the corner and also the free safety blue was coming right up the middle. Now they're back to where they started with the ball before the penalty. But it's third down. Auburn's defense has just kept them in the football game, and the offense has made just enough to have a chance to win. Auburn now takes timeout. There seems some indecision, and rather than blow a play, they call a timeout. Auburn with one timeout remaining. Alabama has all three remaining. Two minutes and 45 seconds to play, and Alabama leading 22 to 17. Hi. I'd like to show you two new Amazing Mechanics products from Craftsman at Sears. Let me ask you, have your sockets ever let you down? If so, check out the new Craftsman Max Access Ratchet and Socket Sets. Our breakthrough design allows them to go where standard and deep sockets can't, saving time, frustration, and money. It's 45% stronger, yet the thinner profile allows for greater access. Now you can do more with less, all covered under the Craftsman Lifetime Warranty. Buy it now for $59.99. Now let's talk raw power and cordless mobility. The Craftsman C3 19.2 volt impact wrench. Boasting 200 foot-pounds of torque, it can tackle anything from rusty lug nuts to sinking huge lag bolts. Jobs usually done with a pneumatic tool. Get it now with battery for just $99.99, only at Sears. So hurry into Sears. Visit us online at sears.com slash innovation or call to take advantage of these incredible deals today. Sears, home of Craftsman. After a long day of doing cowboy stuff, I like to retire with the warm company of Coach Ditka and my buddy Steve. Thanks to Watch ESPN, we never miss any live games or our favorite ESPN shows. I taught him that. <laughs> Watch ESPN.com and the Watch ESPN app. The ESPN Networks, live anywhere. Monday, Eli Manning leads the Giants air attack against Drew Brees and the first place Saints. ESPN Monday Night Football, Giants Saints at 8.30.
Well, the Alabama side is holding its breath. The Auburn side is roaring lustily here at Legion Field on third down and goal. Campbell puts it up. He's got it to Bo Jackson. Jackson is down just short of the goal line. He's a foot away. Keith, that was a sensational catch and effort by the freshman, Bo Jackson. Watch this again. He is coming out of the backfield in the short flat. The ball is right on target, but watch what this freshman does. You can see why many people say he's the second best talent in the Southeast. He's going over the top, trying to get there, and he gets right to the one foot line. I think it's Wilcox down. It is Tommy Wilcox who made the saving tackle, and Tommy just went at him. He only knows how to play football one way, and that's full bore. So he came in there playing hurt at 195 pounds, and he took on that big running back who weighs, with that all that gear on him, close to 230 pounds. It was a massive collision, and Wilcox is down with two and a half minutes to play in the ball game. Now you see that Georgia has edged out to a four-point lead over Georgia Tech. Number one ranked Georgia Bulldogs. My heart is beating fast as if I was coaching, and I'm not kidding. This is a tremendous opportunity for Pat Dye, who is in his second year as we look at Bear, trying to figure out how close is it. There's Pat. Go get him. What a fine young football coach he is. Boy, this would put him ahead of schedule if he could upset Alabama today. Fourth down, goal to go, a half a yard. Give the ball to Jackson over the top. The same play they made on short yardage uh, earlier in the drive, back on the 30-yard line. Wilcox is up now, and Tommy's going to walk off. I remember another Alabama defensive back who made a marvelous play in the Sugar Bowl to save a game uh, against Penn State. Don McNeil, remember that? Oh, he did. Same type of play, in fact. Yep. He tackled the, re the receiver on the same type play at the one-yard line. Penn State went over the top twice, and Alabama th threw it back and won the national championship in a game that we'll all remember. And we'll have another national championship game, it looks like, if Georgia can stay ahead in the Sugar Bowl January the 1st. If, if Auburn should score, Keith, I think they'll go for two uh, to try to uh, force Alabama to go for the touchdown to win the game. Give them a three-point lead. First things first. Fourth and goal and a half a yard. Jackson, touchdown. seconds to play in the ball game. Auburn will go for two. 23-22 Auburn. They're going to try to make it 25. Campbell is hit down by Russ Wood. The two-point try fails. So they go 66 yards and 14 plays to take a one-point lead, 23-22, with 2.26 to play. If you're tired of stabbing your fingertips to test your blood glucose, we have news that could change your life. The Embrace Meter from Diabetes Care Club is nearly painless. And the best news is that Diabetes Care Club would love to send you one of these meters. Call now to find out why. Nearly a quarter of a million patients have joined Diabetes Care Club. Membership is free. So is the call. Call 1-800-929-6087. Talk to Diabetes Care Club. You'll be glad you did. Attention all homeowners. Do you want help today? Call the Loan Modification Help Hotline now. We may be able to cut your mortgage payment in half and help to reduce your interest payment to as low as 1%. Find out what we can do for you today. The call is free. The consultation is free. Discover how much we can reduce your mortgage payment. Call now for a free consultation. We have trained staff ready to assist you. Call 800-811-5114. 
I've got to tell you, a few weeks ago, I saw the White's metal detector ad on TV. In no time at all, my local dealer had me out treasure hunting. I was finding the good stuff my first day. And the best part? You can see what's in the ground before you dig it up. Your treasure hunting adventure can start right now. Call for your free catalog. My wife said I needed a healthy hobby. She's proud of the weight I've lost and really proud of this. Call now. Well, there's your whole story right there on the scoreboard. Del Greco ready to kick it off. Joey Jones deep for Alabama. 2.26. Alabama with three timeouts left. It's a high hanger. But Jones, he's three, four yards deep in the end zone. He isn't going to mess with it. He knows Auburn's all jacked up. So he's going to just take it at the 20 and let him cool a little bit. They have the numbers on the touchdown drive. And obviously, the offense has been ineffective. But when they had to, they moved 66 yards when it meant the difference in possibly winning or losing the football game. Perfect example of the defense keeping you in the ball game. Good kicking, good defense, no turnovers. You always have a chance to win. Alabama has thrown the ball well today, 219 yards. That's their highest passing total of the season. And Walter Lewis is the quarterback. He gets it off. It is incomplete and almost intercepted by Dennis Collier. Hit him right on the breastbone. Right on the numbers. I think if I was planning my defense against Walter Lewis as we look at this play, Padia, number 47, gets a good break on the ball, comes up, but he's coming so hard into the pass that he couldn't control it. I believe I would rush Lewis. He's too good. Yeah. Uh, scrambling, and gives too much time. Yep. I believe I'd go after him with this. But just. Second down and 10. Set it up to Ricky Moore, the fullback. And Moore is up to the 24. Doug Smith hit him, and Smith hit him hard. Smith, 266, 265. And Gerald Robinson, 6'4", 242, was putting the pressure on Lewis that time. Moore is shaken up in a timeout for him with two minutes and four seconds to play in the ball game. And uh, you can see there in that graphic that this man, Paul Bryant, has never lost three games in a row in a single season, the same season at Alabama. Well, Bear, since he went to the wishbone in 1971, has won 116 games and lost only 15 and tied one. It is third down and six at the 24. Lewis is dangerous. He's got enough room for his first down, but he throws the ball and it ricochets out of the hands of Ben Gross up at the 40. Lewis could have run for it, but he saw Ben Gross upfield and he hit him right in the stomach with the ball. I've seen Bear Bryant have all the luck in the world to go with his great ability, his team. Here is a tough break. Ben Gross is an excellent receiver. The ball is right there. Somehow he cannot control it and it falls incomplete. Auburn is very lucky. Fourth down and six, and Alabama's going with a minute 53 to play. Lewis back. Loops it upfield and is intercepted. He tried to touch the ball, and Bob Harris intercepts it at the Alabama 30. His second interception of the ball game with a minute and 45 seconds to play. And it looks like Auburn has a great opportunity now to break a long drought. Auburn has not beaten Alabama since 1972 with a famous block kick game, 17 to 16. They put it down at the 31. Keith, I, I just want to mention again, as we look at Bear, we know how disappointed he must be. It's amazing that coaches have said all along, if you don't beat yourself, you'll stay in the football game with a good defense. And Auburn has been patient. They have not turned the ball over. They have had good kicking, and they're about to win the biggest game probably of Pat Dye's career. 145 to play. Lionel James going to run as wide as he can and as long as he can. And they've got him down at about the 25. Jeremiah Castillo. Brought him down. Let's look at the interception. I think it was really a poor choice 
I would have come back and repeated the play that they had open uh, on third down. But uh, Lewis is throwing out of the pocket. This doesn't give him a chance to scramble or make the first down on the run. He's not as good out of the pocket. Something Alabama has added this year, and he just lays it up perfect for interception. Great play by the defense. Throwing to an unlikely receiver in Craig Turner at that particular time. He tried to touch it in, and it exploded in his face. Time out. On lazy days when it's chilly, turning up the heat costs money, and wrestling with blankets is silly. If you want to stay warm, you need Forever Lazy. The one-piece, lie-around, lounge-around, full-body lazy wear that covers you from head to toe in soft, warm fleece. Just zip it and get lazy. Now you're toasty warm from head to toe, and your hands and feet stay free. Forever Lazy comes in stylish colors in sizes to fit everyone in the family. With a drawstring hoodie to keep the chilly weather away, it will be the talk of your next tailgate. Forever Lazy has zippered hatches in front and back for great escapes when duty calls. And now Forever Lazy in any size is just $29.95. Call now and we'll also include the fleece footies. The footies are a $10 value, but they're yours free. Order now and we'll double the offer. That's right, we'll send you a second Forever Lazy and footies free. Just pay separate processing and handling. A one $100 value, all for just $29.95. Here's how to order. Call 1-800-824-0268. This is a public announcement. CNNMoney.com reports that in some areas of the country, buyers are scooping up homes for as little as $1,000. Foreclosures are at an all-time high. Government and private banks are liquidating these homes now. If you currently rent a house or apartment, you may call now and learn how to receive your free list of these homes. All others may call tomorrow. Every house must be sold. This is a public announcement. Call 1-800-796-7086. That's 1-800-796-7086. Call now. The time now becomes the most dramatic factor. 126 to play in the ball game. Alabama with two timeouts remaining. Auburn with one. All Auburn wants to do is run it around. Run around. Run the clock down. On second down and five. Hamill gives to James. James pops it over the right side and struggles to about the 22 before Rodriguez can stop his forward motion. And Wilcox is back in the ball game for Alabama. Tommy took a whack in the head when he took on Bo Jackson. Alabama spends another of its timeouts. Now the clock shows 1.13 to play in the ball game. Well, as you said, Frank, if Auburn holds on now, as they're looking at third down and a yard to win this ball game, I don't think there's any questions the biggest win Pat Dye scored. Pat Dye has his record uh, isn't as impressive as other coaches because he's turned three jobs around. East Carolina had a losing program. He came back, turned it to a winning program. Same at Wyoming, and he's doing it all, but he's definitely ahead of schedule at Auburn. If he should win this game, make an 8-3 victory over Alabama. Pat Dye. The most valuable players in the ball game for Auburn, Bo Jackson, running back. Jackson, 16 carries, 110 yards, and a touchdown. For Alabama, Walter Lewis, 14 out of 24, 204 yards, a touchdown. And uh, each university will receive from Chevrolet in the names of those players $1,000 each for their general scholarship fund. Third down and one. Alabama's got to hold them if they have any hopes. Jackson over the top. Fumbles the football, Alabama's got it. Can you believe it? In a minute and nine seconds, the play in the ball game. Bo Jackson went over the top, the ball came loose, and here's Alabama, not dead yet. Not with Walter Lewis scrambling at quarterback. Let's see if we can detect why the ball pops out. Jackson, right, the right hand back is going over the top. Oh, he had it out there like a loaf of bread. He's right hit. down on somebody's ball. Home way back out here. Yes, he lost going up to see what. From the 21 for Alabama, first down in a minute and nine seconds to play, and Walter Lewis on a roll. He's got Ben Dross open. Jesse holds on to it. And it's a first down for Alabama up at the 36. 15 yards on the pass. And the clock stops while the chains are moved. A minute and two to play in a ball game. A field goal can win it for Alabama. 23-22 Auburn. Each team now with one timeout remaining. Ben Dross and Jerry Jones, the wide people. 56 seconds to go in the ball game. Walter Lewis 
He gets his pass off. The pass is complete. And it's good for a first down up at the 47. And again, the clock will stop with 48 seconds to play. It's the same pass that Ben Rose dropped on third down in the previous possession. They've gone to it twice. And both times it's open. The linebacker should stay in on the curl, force him to throw the ball short outside. Now the chain is down, and the clock is running at 42 seconds to play. Walter Lewis again rolling out. Has time, gets it off to the sideline. Too long. And it's incomplete. Ben Gross coming out of bounds to make the catch. Keith, he was wide open. Yes. Lewis just held the ball a little bit too long. At this rate, uh, Auburn, Alabama can take two pass completions and be in field goal range. I still would rush. I still would go after Lewis. I would not defend in this situation on every down. Lewis is too good. 35 seconds to play in the ball game. One point lead for Auburn, 23-22. Lewis back, getting a little pressure this time. Auburn, and he throws the ball. That may be grounding. It was Ben Thomas, number 91, that got him, and it's intentional grounding against Walter Lewis. And 30 seconds to play. I'm, I'm really surprised that uh, they had a running play fake. There's no need to fake the running play with 30 seconds on the clock. That just gives the defense time to penetrate. And, uh, of course, uh, Auburn came to the backside. And... Intentional grounding, also down, third down. Well, the ball comes back now to the Alabama 25. See, he's faking, Keith, and you don't get as good a protection there. Lewis is best rolling out. They've got to go to the Auburn 43 for the first down. And they need 32 yards. Pressure. Got him by the coattail, but he gets away and dumps it off to Craig Turner. And Turner to the sidelines and out of bounds up at the 30. Now 20 seconds to play in the game. Put the low pressure on Lewis now, and that's what's important. Alabama's not known really for their passing uh, statistics. They are play-action pass when they're in the ball game, not from a come-from-behind situation. So their protection's not quite as good as a normal passing piece would be. Again, that was Ben Thomas, the big sophomore. 267 pounder that had a hold of Walter Lewis. Lewis broke away. Walter 6'1, 209 himself. 20 seconds to play in the game. It is fourth down. They've got to go to the Auburn 43 for a first down. They've got to go deep. He got it over the middle and it is incomplete. And with 13 seconds to play in the ball game, Auburn gets the ball. Quincy Williams was back and he forced Walter Lewis to throw the ball. Lewis was looking deep. He didn't have anybody deep. And then when Williams arrived, he had to let it go. It shows again that the offense going up and down the field, unless you put it in the goal line, doesn't mean all that much. Alabama controlled the offensive ball, made close to 500 yards total offense, and still is going to get beat by a team that's just over 200 yards. Two big plays. The fumble snatched out of the air and run a return for 62 yards. And the interception, the two interceptions, actually by James. No, not James. Uh, the safety man. For Auburn. Bob Harris. Bob Harris. Well, they'll count it down. It's a happy day for the Auburn Tigers and their partisans. They come storming out onto the field. There's five seconds remaining to play in the ball game. They're trying to tear down the goalpost. I don't know if they can ever restore order after this. And probably just as well now to let things run off and time expire. Three teams have beaten Alabama this year, Tennessee, LSU, and Auburn, that haven't beaten them in over a decade. Well, everything in life is cyclical. And the cycle means around, and you can't avoid it. Sooner or later, you're going to have to have a few down times, and he's had few. 
And they're going to let the clock run off now, and the game is over. As Paul Bryant walks off, losing for the first time since 1972 to Auburn. As Pat dies, youngsters, rose up when the occasion was offered them, when the opportunity was in front of them, and they stuck it in the end zone. And the final score, Auburn 23, Alabama 22.